You gotta start the uh, LMC TV stream too. Come on, start, Cliff. Yep, we're live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 5 p.m. Village of Mamaric Board of Trustees work session. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting. So move. Second. All in favor. Aye. Uh, okay, uh, we, we're gonna go. Uh, we have, we have a, a large executive session meeting, which I'm hoping yeah, we're live. We have a large Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 5 p.m. Village of Mamari Board of Trustees work session. Cliff, I'm hearing myself. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting. I think you have the YouTube page open. Yeah, you gotta, Aye. Uh, you gotta close that or mute it on your system. Okay. Uh, we're going to go into executive session, hopefully uh, go through it as quickly as possible. Uh, there are a lot of items. I'm going to make the motion. I'm going to read them right now. Uh, the first item uh, is a tax certiorari. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered into executive session pursuant to 105.1D of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to matters of ongoing litigation. Uh, that is one, these are certiorari's uh, and they will be 214, 216 Rockland Avenue, 229 Union Avenue. The next item on the agenda is litigation. It's 130 Beach Avenue. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered going into executive session pursuant to 105.1D of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to matters of ongoing litigation. The next item is item C, substitution of counsel, ABC Properties, LLC versus Village of Mamaric et al. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to go into executive session pursuant to 105.1D of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to matters of ongoing litigation. Item D, review of ongoing litigations. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1D of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to matters of ongoing litigations. E, police, police department appointments. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered for the Board of Trustees to convene as a Board of Police Commissioners, <coughs> pardon me, and a subsequent motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1F of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss matters leading to the appointment of a particular person. Item F, Village Attorney. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 1015F of the New York State Public Officers Law to review uh, village attorney, possible village attorney employment applicants. Uh, the next is complaint from a volunteer board member. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105, no, I'm sorry, 1015A and 1015C of the New York State Public Officers Law, a public discussion that could imperil safety and future investigation of the prosecution of a criminal offense. Okay, I am making these motions. Uh, can I have a second? I just can I, I just think for G, I think we should just be having advice of counsel. It just seems like I don't quite know what we're discussing, but it doesn't. I don't know that it's like public safety. So I think we should just have that. Sh that topic should be an advice of counsel. Okay, but uh, the, Jerry consulted with the attorney, and that was his opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't. Oh, I okay. I don't think it's correct, but okay. And just a reminder, I'm recusing from C. Okay. So, uh, I, I'm recusing from C. Okay. And as a reminder, to the extent in D we talk about Hampshire, I will recuse from that portion of the discussion. I, yes. And, and if we talk about ABC, we'll all just be coming in and out. Yes. To recuse. Okay. I will second and that motion, Tom. Wait, 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 before, before yeah. the Sorry. Motion, if to the extent somebody starts talking about Save the Sound, I will be I will be jumping off, and I do want to reserve on 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 what what uh, Trustee Lucas just <laughs> raised. A is public safety, and C. Uh, I at this point I I don't have 
I don't know the matter, so I have I don't have objections. But I will I reserve on that until I hear why the the cost the the, the the rationale, and and at that point I'll, I'll I'll then we'll decide to continue talking about this in executive session or in advice of council. So I reserve on that until we hear exactly how it's tied to to the to I the facts. Call roll, please. Trustees Lucas. No. Trustee Winstrup? Yes. Trustee Natchez? No. Trustee Tafour? I have a question. Are we just deciding not, not to enter on anything or just? Uh... I'm deciding not to enter on anything. I'm sorry, this, this is a yes or no for everything? Yeah, I mean, well, if, if we want to do it one by one, but it's right now, it's for everything. So. But we never do it one by one. The, the motion is for everything. The motion and the second are for everything. So let's just get that. So the, the, then pull out, pull out the. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, pull out the last issue so that we can go in and, and have a conversation on that. I think we have to finish the vote, and then we can. And do then I'll vote no, and let's. The vote. All right. So there's three no's right there. So pull okay. up, pull out the last session, which is the, the issue, and then we make a motion it. to go into you know um, executive session on all but the last item that was read by uh, in the previous motion. Is there a second? Oh, I will second that. Oh, you roll. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Trustee Wentrup? No. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. No, no whatever. Let, let's go into executive session and I'll tell you how we're going to do this in what order. Adios. Goodbye. Bye bye.
Sound is on. Video is on. Chief, who do we have? Who missed? Um, Danny Nora, we missing uh, Victor. Kelly's here. Kelly. Jerry on it? Uh, no. No Victor. Do what I do without this. Huh? Hello, Victor. Oh, he just joined. Okay. Uh, we need Jerry. back from our executive session. Uh, in executive session, we met as a board of police commissioners. And as a board of police commissioners, uh, we voted unanimously to hire Francisco Medina uh, as a new police officer in the village of Mamaronic. Uh, if Mr. Medina accepts, uh, we will uh, go forward with the paperwork. Uh, and that was the only vote that was uh, reported out of executive session. And that happened as a board of police commissioners. Okay, we have stuff on our agenda that is on for the regular meeting. Uh, I wanna hit that first. Uh, we're gonna stop at around, you know, we, it, 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 either when we get through on for regular meeting and, or at 7.15. We're gonna, we're gonna do everything on for the regular meeting first. Uh, item 1B. Public Employer Health Emergency Plan for the Village of Mamara. Gary, you want to? Mayor, um, as part of a series of mandates, the governor and the state are asking for uh, the other the other the other name for this plan is the Communicable Disease um, Emergency Response Plan. Um, so this plan is a plan on how to deal with if we have another pandemic or another kind of uh, communicable disease outbreak or issue. Um, and it is um, with the help of our insurance broker, uh, they provided us a template and we filled in the blanks, provided it to the unions uh, as required, and then uh, moved it for, um, for its consideration. It was uh, in the process of adjusting this plan, my uh, misunderstanding with Trustee Natchez, I thought he wanted to um, get me to comment about making the individuals in the plan uh, generalized instead of uh, by name. Um, and so um, Dan Sarnoff, um, I asked Dan Sarnoff to make those changes. I don't know if he was able to find time today to make those changes or not. But I believe uh, but that was it. Jerry, actually, that's not what I was saying. I was saying that they should be generalized in terms of the position and then can be followed by the name. But it shouldn't oh, it be followed by the name. Okay. That, that, that's what I would, uh, and I also suggest we have in the title the for the village. Yep, that's fine. We got that one. Okay. You know, so if, if those if those connect, corrections can be made, I have no problems moving forward with that. Uh, okay, good. Okay, good. Actually, I think where it says Jerry Barbero, it says village manager. So is, I think Dan was asking village manager dash Jerry Barberi. It Throughout the document, with the exception of the village manager, it refers to the position. So I wanted to be consistent. 
So it's, it's a global change. Yes. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any other issues? Okay, hearing none. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Yep. yep. Uh, pandemic response plan on for regular meeting. So the pandemic response plan is um, part of the requirement that the state is asking for. It is a more operational type plan um, to make sure that um, we have some kind of a system and um, document in place to be able to respond to a pandemic um, should that occur again. It is uh, in part written um, well, my original document was written probably seven, seven years ago, six, seven years ago. Uh, but now our document includes real life experience instead of just hypotheticals. So we have every lo local emergency order. We have every declaration of emergency. We've had 12 so far, um, once a month. Um, we have our inventory, how we go about purchasing PPE and other uh, items. Um, so we have a very comprehensive plan, um, which we will be submitting to the, uh, to the state. I doubt they'll read it, but we have to file it. <laughs> I doubt they'll read it. <laughs> That's what I said. I doubt they'll read it, but we have to file it, so. And we'll read it. We have it. We lived it. Yep. Yeah, we did it. It's not over yet. No, not over yet, right? But you see the light at the end of the tunnel, thank God. We hope, but hope, yeah. what's going on in the rest of the world and parts of this country is not encouraging. Yes, yeah, it, it just doesn't. And, and, and I think I think we need to be very much aware of it as we proceed with all of our approaches. Uh, hopefully, uh, we won't be victimized, but we need to be. We, we can't just ignore what's going on around us. And I think Jerry's plan uh, and implementation has been uh, super helpful and you know, kudos to him for having Thanks. had the vision to do that. Thank you. Great. Uh, pandemic response plan. Uh, police reform and reinvention on for regular meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we added um, some information. The board had asked us to uh, look at the potential cost of these components. Um, best guess, but also we have some estimates to back up a few items, uh, such as body cameras. And um, whether we, um, we believe as a group, and that's a staff group, um, if we have a short term, if we can achieve them in short term, medium term, or, or long term. Um, so we provided that in the document. Um, what else did we provide, Chief and Dan? What else did we provide? I forgot. Well, we, we added the um, the survey responses as appendix two. Yep. Um, uh, we followed up on some other questions the board had, but uh, I think uh, you covered most of it. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chief, do you have any add on us? No, I think they both summed it up. Okay, Trustee Natchez. I have a couple of comments. Um, first is uh, I'm appreciative of the, you know, that you've done homework on some of the monies, but I would prefer to take the monies out of page 10 and 17. Uh, they, they may be understated, they may be overstated, but I think what we need to do, you know, we're committed to go forward to try and fund what's needed. And I think that's putting in monies that we're not sure that that's the right thing to do, uh, I think can be potentially considered to be misleading later on. So um, I would like okay. to come out, uh, I'm not talking about editing the verbiage, but I am talking out the actual dollar figures. Okay, which one is that on what component? Page 10 and 17. Okay. And, and I, don't, yeah. I don't, no, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, page 10 is the, um, Ten, uh, ten is ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that's the seven, seventeen is the hundred and whatever. Yeah. So yeah, uh, page ten is the New York State accreditation, which we identify as a medium term goal, and page seventeen is the crime prevention reduction uh, recommendations, 
Uh, and that's where you had the uh, 70 to 100,000 in ongoing costs. Okay, so, so those numbers are actually in the budget um, right now. We spend $10,000 uh, for Power DMS, which is a, uh, an accreditation. Um, mm -hmm. It's a platform that we use for accreditation and we have $70,000 in the budget for body cameras. So we can remove them from the plan if you wanna do that. I mean, that's... Uh, I, my, my concern is they should not be in the plan. And I have no problems, you know, discussing them and, you know, you know, and putting them in budget and, and going forward. Okay. It's not, it's not that we're not, it, taking them out of the plan does not mean that we're not doing those things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it may, it may mm -hmm. turn out that we may need to spend more than $10,000 as we go through it. It may need, you know, more than what it, the 100000 or whatever it is. Why don't we just qualify it by saying estimated cost? I, I, I don't want to put, I, I I think it is misleading and can be confusing later on. I think it's better to take it out. It, it says what the, the plan doesn't change. Okay, I, 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 once again, I, I'm not, I'm just saying that I think saying estimated covers, I believe your concerns. Uh, I don't believe so. Um, Anybody else want to take out the numbers? If, I would say there's another number on page 12 too. I, I may have missed that. Okay. Okay. So you're all for taking out the numbers? Well, I, I don't. I don't understand if the if the qualifier estimated yeah. is is added. What the concern is with including the numbers? It, 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 I would think it would just it, it would be more transparent. That's my thought as well. I mean, we asked for we asked for costs to be added at our last work session. We did. Then they got costs added. And now we have want been to added. And I, I really like the use of short term, long term. Maybe. I do too. That's very helpful because that was a good recommendation. I agree. No, yeah. I, th I think those are good. I just I'm concerned about the numbers being misleading. Anyway, if everybody wants it, yes. If they don't, no. Up to them. Unless I hit different. I think if we add estimate estimated, we make it clear that we're not committed to these numbers. And um, I because you know it, they may I mean they they are based on on some fact, correct? Right. They are based on some fact, um, but oh, yeah. they're not. You know, we don't know what we're going to get grants for. We don't know what other things we're going to want to do. So I think if we said estimated, we kind of cover both of the bets. Because people need to understand that this is an expensive process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just put estimate in and move on. On page 10, 12, and 17, right? Add estimated. I think those are the only three I saw. Okay. But if I guess if somebody Googles for a dollar sign, that would get right. to everything. Uh, yes, I, on page 13, I would like to add a number six. Uh, that Hold would be. Let me catch up. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Continue to work on building relationships and trust, as well as being proactive in all activities, including quality of life issues, while using discretion and observing and enforcing the laws. Does that deserve a um, separate number? Yes. Where did that come from? It comes from the one of the one of the planks was quality of life issues, and we are very we're not we're not very clear on that anywhere. Okay. And, and there was just there's been if you read a lot of the comments from individuals, they centered on quality of life issues, good, bad, and indifferent. Okay, uh, I, I have no problem putting it in, but let, let's bear in mind that the, that was not the purpose of this exercise, uh, was to deal with quality of life issues in policing. It was- and, the, it's, a, it's actually one of the planks that was supposed to be done. And, and it, it was, to do, okay, okay. Well, I, I have a question if, um, and this is a question I think for Bob on notice issues. If we're adding a, a new number, a new yeah. section, 
um, to component three, which is Dan's language, adding quality of life ish in issues. Um, and we are trying to adopt this tonight. Can we do this? It, this hasn't been published or noticed, this new yeah. section. But you're not adopting a local law. Okay. So you can change it as you like. This is your document. Okay. And 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 we don't we can change. I mean, this is a report that has to be in Albany by April first, but that doesn't mean we can't keep changing it. I mean, the chief may have recommendations, the committees may have recommendations. It's just really showing that we made a good faith effort to address address the issues that the governor asked us to address, and that we're not just putting this in the file drawer and not looking at it again. We can keep. We can keep and 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 uh, Natchez, could you just repeat? I'm sorry. Repeat that sentence again. Continue to work on building relationships and trust, as well as being proactive in all activities, including quality of life issues, while using discretion in observing and enforcing the laws. And I'll be happy to. I can. Okay, do you want to say we're going to be using discretion in enforcing the laws? Say again? I'm just concerned about saying we're going to be using discretion in enforcing the laws because one of the one of the impetuses for this is the laws not being, you know, the perception that laws aren't being enforced fairly. We have been told on numerous occasions by the chief that officers have discretion in terms of how they proceed in a specific instance. I, I understand that. And, and I think, I'm sorry, go ahead. And I think that that, I think is an important thing to have. Uh, I don't think you can just say everything is black and everything is white or everything is red and everything is green. I think there is going to be discretion that is exercised. And what I think, you know, I think we need to recognize that. But I think that you, you're trying to put it into a framework of where you're trying to head. It doesn't mean you ignore the laws or do away with the laws. But you know, if somebody gets stopped for speeding, he may, they may or may not get a ticket. But I think that that's, I think that's the potential problem because yeah. I think that language could imply that this PRRC, and I don't think it's the case, you know, wants police officers to use discretion in a way that might be unconstitutional. I mean, I, I, why, I don't know why we would introduce this language that could be extraordinarily problematic. I think what you're getting at, Dan, which is, you know, diversion programs and things like that, um, that is addressed elsewhere in the PRRC report. I. I so I think what you're getting at is addressed elsewhere in a way that's more reflective of what the committee was trying to get at. I don't think so. But I, I, I think agree. that my concern is this. Part of the impetus to this is, and I'm not saying this is about the village of America, but statewide and countrywide, is the perception of the laws not being enforced equal, of minorities being pulled over in a disproportionate uh, incidence, of uh, people being treated differently by law enforcement. So if we're then memorializing that we're, we're gonna have discretion, we, are, we all know there's discretion in the field, but I don't know why we have to memorialize it in this document which you know is really about promoting you know equity under the law if you if you object to the word of discretion take the word discretion out i'm not going to you know i'm very concerned that we we you know that this report is does not really address the quality of life issues and i'm very concerned about that and that was one of the planks that they were supposed to do and we've stayed out of you know, addressing the um, committee to let them do their work, but this is our report. Okay, let's just take the word uh, discretion out. I'll be fine with what you said. And so can you, can you read it again, do you mind? 
Continue to work on building relationships and trust, as well as being proactive in all activities, including quality of life issues, uh, while uh, observing and enforcing the laws. I can live with that. Yeah, I mean, we know that everybody has to use his discretion, but we, you know, we don't want to encourage the the wrong kind of discretion. Dan, can you email me that? Yes, I will, but I, I can't do it right now. <laughs> but but, but I, I will do it during the course of the meeting. Okay, before we get to the, yeah. All right, anything else um, in this document? Uh, there may be one other thing. Hold on, please. Yeah, on page 15, on number two, which is talking about the complaint review board. At the end of the first sentence, with an odd number of individuals, I want would like to add with the specifics with a specific structure uh, uh, to be worked out or determined. I don't know. I, really I actually do that. I, again, there, there, there are very specific recommendations in part of this and very general recommendations in other parts. Of it. I, I was actually trying to get them to be more general in this area because I knew anything we did would be the subject of a law anyway. So getting into the weeds in it, I, I didn't think it was a great idea, but they, you know, they chose to do that, but I agree with what you just said. Okay. Okay. Did... okay. Don't push it. <laughs> All right. I may have one more, just hold on. I need to get to it. Yeah, I'd like to propose um, a number six, which may be uh, at the end of the document. A component six? Yeah, component six. As we move forward and when reasonable uh, and when feasible, move the police personnel files to the village human resources department. I, I strenuously object to that. We got email about that today from Labor Council, and I, I don't. I, I just don't think we should add that right here. Also, this was not addressed by our committee, and I I, I object. Uh, yeah, this this was the subject of an email today, uh, where the Labor Council actually said strongly recommend that we not do this. I understand what Labor Council said. I read the memo. Okay. So I, I, yeah, I also, I also, I also know that many communities are doing this. But we're spending a lot of money on the Human Resources Department, and I think we should use it. Don't want to put it in. Don't put it in. Does anybody want to put it in? I do. <laughs> Duly noted, trustee. Okay, I, I don't think that's going in. Anything else? Not for me at this point. Any other trustee? No, I just want to thank the committee and the staff for putting it all together. Yes, you know, Jerry and Dan and Sandy uh, were long and hard on this. Uh, and, and also uh, some of the other uh, senior members of the department put a lot of work in the uh, committee met many, many times that we saw, and then the subcommittees uh, picked it up and they had many meetings. And I think that they all worked really hard uh, and slogged through some very difficult discussions. Uh, and, and we should be proud of uh, all the people that volunteered and really uh, gave a good effort to this. And as we said before, uh, and I think as trustee, uh, Lucas said before, this is the beginning of a process and not the end of a process. So uh, I just want to thank the staff for their hard work. Uh, next up. 
First, there's a fire department equipment. Mr. Sonoff, don't you usually do this? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the board recalls, we received a grant of $250,000 uh, through the uh, assistance of Assemblyman Otis. Uh, we've already spent a good portion of it uh, for uh, three priest vehicles and uh, the uh, uh, SCBA uh, canisters for the fire department. Uh, the, uh, we have approximately uh, $63,000 left and uh, the department in accordance with what we uh, submitted to the state is looking to purchase firefighter gear and pagers uh, totaling approximately $63,000. Uh, which if the board approves this purchase uh, will leave us with a grant balance of $255. So we're trying to uh, maximize as much as we can from this grant. Any questions or concerns? No, thank you, Dan, for squeezing every last dime out of this. <laughs> well, thank you to the chief. You know, the, uh, uh, thankfully, uh, some of our department heads know how to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just have one works capital project, uh, premier sure. regular project. Dan, do uh, you want to talk about this? Sure. Um, this is very similar to uh, a project the board approved uh, a couple of uh, maybe a month or so ago. Uh, at that time, it was dealing with uh, uh, water, uh, sorry, uh, uh, pressure regulators and uh, wholesale customer meter at, uh, I believe it was. Um, Anderson Hill Road. Uh, yeah. This is for uh, Westchester Avenue. It's a connection point between the Waterworks and uh, Suez, who provides water to uh, Rybrook and uh, Portchester, I believe. So this is just a similar project to gauge the amount of water that is being uh, sold to the outside customers. Right. And part of it is that we, we, we can't accurately uh, uh, yeah, we're relying on Suez to give us readings and that uh, low flow rates, uh, we think that they're, they're missing a lot and not reporting a lot. Uh, also, what it does is, you know, it, it allows us, if we have a fire situation or a situation where uh, we, we have low pressure on our side, uh, we can control that by uh, lowering the pressure on Suez's side. So it, it helps us with fire protection in the future. Uh, so you know, we, we, we won't be in a situation where you know, uh, if it's summertime and there's high demand and God forbid there's a uh, big fire uh, and everybody in uh, Rye and Rye Book is water in their lawns and we don't have enough pressure uh, to do what we need to do. So, and, and it was also mandated by New York State. Anybody have any questions or concerns? No, thank you. Well, and as you can see, uh, Westchester Joint Waterworks now sends very detailed descriptions of what they're doing. And appreciate it. I, yeah, I, I appreciate too that they stepped up their game. Uh, so that's what's on for the regular meeting. So we don't we only have a few minutes left. I want to go to one that should be an easy one. One uh, H diversity training. Uh, for board of trustees and all of the boards and committees. Uh, the last time we did this, uh, we, we used a firm and I, their name escapes me. Uh, um, I know. Pers I'm sorry, I, somebody I, this? Perspex, pers it's Thank you, yes. You got it, yes, that's it. Perspectives, yeah. It's not perspectives, it, you're close, you're in a ballpark. I'll find it. Perception. Perception, 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 perception institute. institute. You're in the right church, wrong pew. Uh, and the last time we did this, I paid for it out of, the, the mayor has a certain amount of money uh, for uh, training and for uh, conferences. So if the board's all right with that, I, I would be willing to use the money that I have in my budget from this year to pay for this. I think it was like $2,500. Uh, and that, that pretty much wipes me out, but at least it, it's going to a good cause. So. Would the board be all right if we duplicated that training uh, and, and I can do it out of the budget year that we're currently in? Um, I, I think we have to, well, it's gonna have to be done virtually. Yes. And, you know, I think that that was 
very theoretical. You know, it was it was you know it was more like a sociology class, and I think that it's it's beneficial, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I mean, I think we need to do more than that, and I I think we should try to figure out. I know there's um, I've, I've talked to a, a Girl Scout friend who is a diversity officer. And it was for years, and she works with a firm that develops, you know, specific um, programs for specific municipalities. So I think that this is a good start, but I think we should maybe try to do something with Larchmont and the town of Amerinick and see if we can have something that's, um, m you know, more available or partner with some other local nonprofit. Because I think just having a one-off training is just a start. I, and I agree with you. I agree with you on that. But is everybody all right if I move forward with that and have uh, have uh, the HR department contact them? It's fine. Okay. All right. I mean, yep. Just it'll be an update or whatever they scope it out. Yeah. But in, in, in principle, yes, of course. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Seven ten. Yeah. Look for a layup here. Can I say, I, I can, this is, I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've recycled the same materials. You know, stuff has been on our agenda for, you know, four meetings, five meetings, six meetings. I think we have to bite the bullet and, and just try to do another work session so we can clear the decks. And since we're going to have, since we decided to have a, a, a meeting next week to, to talk about village attorney, maybe we could do an hour of a work session and just get some of these things done. I feel like we're we're just. I mean, I, I feel like I keep studying for the test, and the teacher keeps canceling the test, so I have to keep, you know, getting ready every two weeks. I'm fine with I'm fine with doing an hour work session and then going into executive session on Monday. Okay. I, I agree with that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have a problem with that? No. All right. So Sally. Uh, Please schedule next Monday. Yes. The board is going to have a work session. And then uh, I'll tell, we're going to go into executive session. I'll, I'll give you the specifics uh, tomorrow. What time? 5 p.m. Thank you. On the 29th. Got it. Um, Tom, <clears throat> the work session is um, regarding um, the full time village attorney resumes, right? Yes, that, that's the executive session. What Nora is saying. Is let's spend an hour, and I agree with her. Let's yeah, no, no, no. I, I agree with Nora. I just uh, I misspoke, but I just wanted to make sure that Sally. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just about it. yeah and, and Sally, you know, I, you don't need to print materials for Monday. We'll just no. everyone will hold on to tonight's. And we just need a new agenda. Just need a new a new agenda. Yeah. Okay. Same order. Yeah. Same someone order, else backup. Same order. Same yeah. backup. So what I'll do is when I I'll create the agenda tomorrow. I'll just copy everything that we didn't talk about tonight on on to next week's work session. Yeah. Thank you. Sure yeah. Hey. Uh, okay. Why doesn't everybody get something to eat, and we'll see each other at seven thirty. Uh, Motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, everybody. That's it. That's up, Deputy Mayor.
And you see Washington Islander points out of a playoff spot for Boston with a couple of games in hand. Philadelphia ahead of the Rangers, and the Rangers will play in Thursday night and Saturday afternoon. I'm taping the Islanders. Whoever has that on has to shut that off. Taping the Islanders. Oh, okay. That works better. Uh, can someone make a motion to open the regular meeting, please? So move. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good evening. Uh, first item on the agenda tonight is communication to the board one. There are no presentations. Mr. Tippett, why don't we start with him? Thank you. Mayor, do you want to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah. Well, you and I did. It. <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Are you practicing? We did a practice Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America. Of America. Yeah. And to the Republic for the stand. One nation under, under God, God indivisible, and just as every. And justice. justice for all. So me and Augie nailed it tonight. We did two Pledge of Allegiance. Practice one went well. Uh, please uh, let Mr. Tippett speak. Glenn. Are, are you there? Um, Hi, Glenn. Good evening. I hope everybody is starting to enjoy our better weather. Uh, hopefully, it's supposed to get into the 60s this week. Um, a quick one. Uh, they uh, rented out the harbor uh, for a movie they're making in Rye. So you have all the catering trucks, and they set up a nice big white you know, tent for serving everybody. So I went down, and he saw the security guard. And I told him that, you know, I was from the village of Mamarnik. And I was the quality control officer for food and beverage and wanted to see if their catering was up to the community standards that we have set. Mm. They didn't go mm. for it. I didn't even get an olive out of them. But I gave it my best try. You are a genius. <laughs> uh, a couple of quick things. Um, at some point, you should uh, relook at your food establishment uh, law. There's a couple that have been brought up uh, with the Board of Appeals. Number one, if you are defined as a deli, you're not allowed to have any seating. We just had a New York style deli that's going in where the IM used to be. And basically they had to change their business plan to have no seating because if they were a food establishment, there's much different parking regulations. So if you are a deli, you can't have any seats. And that's kind of an outdated model with the type of foods and, and the setup of deli type operations now. The other one is chopped salad, which wants to have curbside service, which is another business model that's becoming very popular. We already have 
restaurants that do it, but in order to do curbside service in the village of Mamernik, you have to be considered a restaurant. And the definition of a restaurant is you have t waiter table service. So the difficulty is uh, Chop Salad wants to try to disguise themselves saying, well, yeah, we can just like take orders and then bring it over to the table at the apt. I think we already have other places that are bringing food out to the cars on um, Mamarnik Avenue. I think we should relook at the law. I think that a lot of people appreciate curbside service. And especially if you have your own parking lot. I don't know what the downside of having curbside service, especially if you have 20 of your own parking spaces and all you're doing is bringing food out from your food establishment to your parking lot to give to somebody. But that's something you should look at. Uh, during your work session, uh, you um, had uh, on the agenda two sir sororities. If they were um, uh, part of a settlement and uh, you're gonna vote on it tonight, I'd like to know for what years and how much the settlement was. And also if you actually voted on settling the town of Rye portion of uh, one and the town portion of the other, because both of them were for 10 years. I believe we had to represent ourselves for either three or four years. And the rest of the sorority was either handled by the uh, town of Rye or the town of Mamaritic. But if you did come to a settlement, I'd like to know what years we're settling for. If we uh, settled and accepted uh, the town of Rye and the village and the uh, town of Mamaritic settlement and what, what the total amount of the settlements for those two sororities are. Uh, lastly, um, uh, part of the executive session, you were going to talk about ongoing cases. What ongoing cases were discussed? You don't have to get in detail, but at least we should uh, be able to know what the ongoing cases are. And at some point, can we have a list of ongoing litigation in the village of Amerinik? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please uh, get Mrs. Sarasoli. Please unmute yourself. Okay, I think you can hear me now? Yes. Um, B. Sarasoli on Florence Street. I spoke at the public hearing on the matter of side yard pickup on February 8th. At that time, the board decided that it would revisit side yard pickup in June after the budget and after the village manager was able to provide the board with a possible cost saving analysis. As another resident suggested that evening, I'm asking again that the board reconsider returning to side yard pickup until June when the issue returns to the board agenda. Side yard pickup was halted because of the potential danger to the health and welfare of our sanitation crews. Though noble at the time, we now know that there was never such a danger. The Mamaroneck schools are opening full day, five days on April 8th. Sports arenas are opening, restaurants are moving to more capacity. So there is absolutely no scientific health related justification to not go back to side yard pickup. Let's be honest. When Mr. Barbieri gives you his cost benefit analysis, you know that there will be some degree of cost savings. Maybe it will be proposed that a sanitation crew be eliminated, consolidating their routes to the others. That would be a money saver. But remember this might lead to necessary overtime and with longer hours, the potential of injury and workman's comp cases would come back. Maybe the feeling will be that by June, the community will already have done curbside pickup for about 15 months. So what's the big deal of getting rid of side yard pickup? That's exactly what I hope does not happen. I find it interesting that the focus has moved from a health and safety issue to a financial savings issue. So what's the reason? One has to wonder if eliminating side yard pickup was the intended result all along. I hope not because if workers wind up being laid off due to cost savings, that would be a loss of trust and credibility for the board and the administration. 
please don't be like a former big city mayor who said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Mm -hmm. I ask you to consider the following. First, ask Mr. Barbieri to remove curbside pickup from his emergency proclamations and resume side yard pickup going forward until your next discussion in June. Second, do not move forward on this issue until a live public hearing can take place the old fashioned way. And above all, please remember that this issue is more than about money. The service provided by our sanitation crews is what makes this village special. It's not a concierge service. In fact, that term is insulting, but rather a special quality of life service, which should be offered to the entire village. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Russell. Uh, Mr. Kevin Duarte Chan. Hi, good evening, everyone. Happy Monday to everyone. I hope everyone's having a good day so far. Uh, I have just a question about the village council and keeping issues out of courts. Specifically, I just want to know what kind of incentive or what kind of system is in place for village council to attempt to keep legal issues from going to court. I ask just because the way it's working now from where I'm sitting anyway, I get this is why I'm asking, I'm not sure. It seems to me that when there's conflict that goes to court, it seems to me that there's an opportunity for village council to make more money, like in billable hours and things like that, which of course costs money for us, the taxpayers. So it sounds like a conflict and that's why, that's why I'm asking tonight. Well, I can tell you from my experience without getting into any specifics is that I've experienced the different village attorneys over the course of the 20 years I've been on and off this board. And I do not at all feel like uh, the village attorney who is now representing us is in any way uh, churning litigation or using litigation to line his own pockets. Uh, I think what we have to be cognizant of here is that people are suing the village of Mamaroneck. They are suing the village of Mamaroneck because of decisions that our boards and commissions have made. They are making the action of the lawsuit. We are defending the lawsuit. I believe that we have uh, gotten good legal advice. I believe that uh, we have strong grounds on all of the litigation that we are defending our boards and commissions. And I think that we are on firm legal ground. Uh, you know, I, I think that we, we have to make sure that when a board or a committee, people volunteers for that and they put hard work into it and they, they sit laboriously for months and years sometimes uh, before they make a decision. And when they make a decision, uh, people sue because it's not in there. A lot of times it's not in the person's monetary interest that decision. So we have to separate you know, the greed of people who want to develop in this community from the, our responsibility to protect the community and to defend our laws and to defend our boards and our committees. Uh, so I, I, I don't believe in my heart of hearts that the current village attorney has in any way uh, tried to prolong litigation or to uh, make uh, efforts to uh, get us into unnecessary litigation. He has defended this community uh, at the behest of the boards and commissions and this board of trustees. But I appreciate your question, Mr. Chan. Thank you very much. Uh, so just a quick follow-up. Does that mean that negotiation is sort of on the table? Is that like a step that we can take before you know we go to trial or before we go to court? I think everybody should always be open to having their ears open and to listening to any entreaty that could possibly be made. Uh, so if you have a connection with people who are suing this village, I would encourage you to uh, have them make a good faith uh, attempt. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, Ms. Milburn. Good evening. Um, I sent a letter to the board and um, the manager, and I just would like to reiterate what was said in the letter. I assume you all have seen it, so I don't want to bore you uh, with it. It is refers to the situation at the end of Bleeker Avenue and the harbor uh, site. Um, 
all the residents in 490 Pliego Avenue are very concerned. We lived through an increasing onslaught of people uh, entering our properties to the point where we, for the first time ever in the 30 years I've been here, had to uh, install locks on our gates. All signs we put up did not help to infringe people clambering all over the place. And we several times had to call the far harbor master or the police to rescue people that were stranded from their kayaks going out onto the water. But essentially it has become a rallying point like an open beach for everyone, including uh, many, many more dogs we have as ever knew were in the neighborhood. So we are imploring you to try to um, remedy the situation and find a solution that is more congenial to our area and to the people that live here. Thank you. Ms. Milburn, uh, I, I'd just like to say, begin by saying, uh, you could never bore anybody. You've never, you, 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 you've never had a boring conversation in your life. You're a very interesting uh, person to talk to. Uh, that being said, I just want to uh, let you know that the village manager has decided uh, to not pursue that initiative at the end of Bleecker. So that, that is something I don't think you'll have to worry about uh, in the near term. So that is an official announcement that can be shared with the residents in the building? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thank you very much. I wish you a good meeting. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, have a good night. Uh, Justin. Hello, Justin. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, and thank you again to listen to my comments. Obviously, it's going to be about the use of the parking spots for the outdoor dining. Um, I have a question and then possibly a follow-up question. Uh, one is, has there been any change to the original price that was proposed on the $12 per spot per month, you know, day, whatever it was proposed? No change. So, Okay. So I guess my, my question then is, I've written several emails regarding the topic, uh, including several proposals, including a program to waive oh, uh, an option to waive fees for businesses that are struggling more than the average due to extended hardships. And I haven't got any response to that. Um, it's just like as an industry, we've lost a lot over the last year and this season and continued access to those spots is really an attempt for the industry or the restaurant industry and uh, to make back the losses and keeping us open on the app. Um, there are, there are several restaurants that can't have guests inside still, even with the extended capacity because their areas are too small uh, to, to follow the social get distancing guidelines. In those scenarios, the use of the parking spots is their only chance to serve guests. It's not an extension of their restaurant as it would be for a bigger facility like mine that does, are, is able to serve guests inside. So in that scenario, those spots are a lifeline to the business. It's not an extension or just an added opportunity to increase revenues. And, you know, just looking at that, like in the future, I would understand having to charge a premium for the use of the spots. If this summer were to go well and everybody's revenues were kind of back in order, you know, and it, and it was available for future seasons, I would totally understand and even be willing to fully commit to a premium price for those parkings, uh, for the use of the parking spots. But in this scenario, we're kind of just looking to get everybody back on their feet and make up the ground that we lost last year. And to get a premium cost on that is, is kind of already putting us behind before we can eat more behind before we even get that access. Well, I, I, I would, I, I thought uh, I, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So we, we were gonna give you April to November and only charge you for five months. So it wasn't just that the, the $12, we were giving you a couple of months break. Right. I, and I, I understood that, but my point is that that still that cost we're talking about just <clears> under 7,000 is a lot to, especially if you're one of those restaurants that it's again, is not an addition to their business. It's becoming their only business until they ha figure out an, another way to social distance. That was why one of my emails proposed 
you know, leaving a cost higher for some restaurants, but maybe giving an option to someone who could prove that they're actually in a, a more of a hardship where they can't actually serve guests, maybe that they would be uh, in some type of, I want to use the word grant or something, but those restaurants would be able to have those fees waived or something like that. Because as I said, in the last meeting, you're, it's becoming a have and a have nots where a bigger restaurant that has the space or has the cash flow. I don't know who has the cash flow to just, you know, to spend extra money, but let's say you do, you're able to take advantage and a smaller guy who's really struggling and was kind of looking at this as the light at the end of the tunnel, um, isn't going to be able to take advantage. Even at you know, $7,000 is a lot of money for a struggling, someone who's been struggling for a year to come up with just to try to get back on their feet. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Mr. L Richard Langruber. Hey, Richard, you're on. Hey, this is Rich Langruber. I'm the uh, president of the Mamaroneck Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and I'd like to just piggyback on some of the comments that Justin was talking about. And, you know, 20 some odd years ago, I was in the restaurant business as well. Uh, thankfully, I left that business way, way, way long ago. But one of the questions that I have for everybody on our board who gave the directive for $12 a day, six days a week uh, per parking spot, how many of the people on our board actually managed or owned a restaurant? Um, probably not a lot of you, if, if any. And the reason why I bring that up is I did some, some math and all I want to do is provide you with some information on the $12 a day. And I think what the chamber wants to propose, and, and we understand you're giving a discount to our members and we really appreciate that. It's 35% off. Uh, based upon taking, you know, the entire time of from April to the middle of November, which is which is great for us, and we appreciate that, that that the village is actually willing to do that. But I'm more concerned about the little guys as well, who can't even afford a chamber membership, let alone the money that they're going to be required to put up in front. Um, so what I what I did is I did some arithmetic here, and I said if if there is even just a chamber member who is interested in four parking spots for those months, that's $6,288 or 131 days. I went through and I counted every single day from May till uh, September. And for those 131 days, you would be charging them $6,288. In order to get $6,288 on average, if you were to have a table with an average check of $100, and, and before even considering that being profitable or not, you would have to have 63 tables at $100 a check just to be able to pay the fee to the village. And if you were to have you know, uh, $150 per table, that would be 42, literally 42 tables that somebody would have to have just to get the money to pay the village. And that's not even considered profit. That's just gross check revenue, right? And so what I'm saying is I, I understand there's a need to have some revenue, but one of the things that I just want to address the board in is go down to the village at eight in the morning and stay there till 11 and you'll see there's a lot of empty parking spots in here. So what the, what the chamber wants to propose for everybody, just not us, is if we can cut it back to $8 a day uh, times how many parking spots, because really from eight in the morning till 11 in the, in the morning, nobody's really parking there. So what, what you're doing is you're, you're charging the restaurants for parking that's really not even being used. And again, it all comes down to this is the friendly village and you guys have done an amazing job and last year it was free, but we're looking for not only helping our members but everybody on the, the avenue. And I, I think it could be something that would help out if you were to be able to charge a little less per day um, so that restaurants can actually afford to put those tables out there 
and, and really, um, you know, support them as much as they want to support you. Uh, and, you know, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Um, you know, there are a lot of little restaurants that we have on our avenue. And like Justin had just said, you know, these guys aren't going to be able to come up with, you know, $3,600 or $4,800 twice a year um, to, to have a parking spot. So those are the ones that you're going to see shut their doors because they're not going to be able to not only have people inside, but even have the opportunity to put tables back out where they were last season. So, uh, and that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Thank you for your time. I appreciate everything you're doing and, and I'll wait for your response. Thanks. Thank you. Go to Angela. Angel. Yes, hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, thanks. Thanks for uh, taking the time out tonight. Listen to all of us. Um, just this is Angelo from Frankie and Finucci's. Um, again, we're just piggybacking off of Justin and Richard's uh, remarks there on the uh, proposed extended outdoor dining area. Um, you know, as I said, I want to reiterate and take everybody's time up, but it's really important to understand that, you know, it's really essential for us, not only as an individual business, but as a village that we draw people to this town and not just for restaurants, but it's for the florist and for every other business on this block that brings people in. And I think, and I feel like we're losing to towns around us that they're just not even thinking about the American village anymore to go to. They're going elsewhere. And if you go out and I, you know, go out on a Friday lunch afternoon, go down to a different town and you'll see how much activity there is on their blocks and their restaurants versus ours. And I do think that's 100% directly related to the fact that we're not accommodating them and losing the battle. And I think, you know, fortunately here at Frankie Finucci's, we do a decent amount of takeout business that we're able to stay alive. Uh, I don't know how much longer, but our dine-in business is nowhere near where it used to be, um, especially with the reduced capacity. Um, and, you know, I know that you increased the capacity now to 75%. But a lot of people just don't want to come inside. They still want to be outside. Uh, I think it's essential. I think it's essential for, again, not only the restaurants, but every other business in town. And as far as the village goes, and I understand your need to, to operate and, and bring in money. But if we don't bring people into this town, those parking spaces are going to be empty. You're going to get zero revenue on them. Um, you know, we have plenty of parking in the back and around. Uh, until we see a, a situation where there's no parking available, I think that's the opportunity to maybe change things. But until then, if it's not a problem, I, I, don't, I don't understand what we're trying to fix. Um, so again, I, I do think that the town, you know, appreciate any support that you guys done in the past and, and that you guys always do. But I think from a cost perspective, I don't know, listen, I don't know the, the economics of the town. I don't know what it costs you guys to do it. Um, and, I, and I appreciate, again, whatever, it takes to get this done, to get it done. But I do think you really need to understand that we, we all got to pitch in together to make this work. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, thanks for listening. Uh, Patty Savone. Patty, unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Ms. Savone, can you unmute yourself, please? Can, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am, now we can hear you. Yeah, yes, Patty Savone, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, it's basically, I'd like to say, that it's basically the same thing that everybody else has been saying. Everybody wants to eat outside, basically our, and you know, if it wasn't for the takeout, I mean, nobody, you know, we've been having a hard time with people coming inside the restaurant. And it's basically the neighboring towns, you know, this is what, if you go into Larchmont, if you go into Scarsdale, if you go into Bronxville, people are, they want to dine outside. And basically we've been, we've been missing the boat in Mamaroneck and people just, that's what they want to do. And last summer it was, it, it really helped. And we, you know, we were very grateful for the, for the village and it really helped us out. And we were very, you know, thankful for that. 
And, you know, we, we hope it, that you could, you know, meet us halfway. And I think it would, it would help all the businesses. I mean, it, it really, we really need that help this year. I mean, we, we still in a, in a pandemic, this is not over. Um, if you could, you know, somehow find a way to help us out this year. I mean, I can understand moving forward, you would have to, you know, charge a premium, you know, price. I mean, as it is with, with the sidewalk cafe, we are paying, you know, seven dollars a square foot for spaces that we're not utilizing because of the six feet social distancing. I mean, you know, people don't understand. You know, they're saying, okay, now you're at a seventy-five percent, you know, uh, uh, occupancy, but that seventy-five percent is doesn't mean anything because you still have a six feet social distancing inside. So basically. I'm still, I still have the same capacity inside my restaurant that I had this whole time. It doesn't mean anything because we still have the six feet social distance in, in between the tables. So, the, you know, for all the restaurants, it doesn't mean anything. So, you know, when people say, oh, you, you have 75% now. No, that doesn't mean anything. It's the same thing. So without that added space outside, it's not, you know, restaurants are not going to experience that extra revenue and we're not going to pay our bills. So, you know, people are gonna have, are gonna struggle. So this summer, more than last summer, we're gonna need the extra help. So if you could find a way to, you know, to fit it into the budget and to help us out, we'd be very appreciative. So, you know, this is all we're asking. So if we could meet us halfway, we'd be very grateful. And I don't know, you know, I'd like to thank you for what you did last year. And if you could do anything for us this year, I'd be, you know, we'd be grateful again. So thank you very much everybody and for listening. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, Ali, Ali Keen. Yes, I, uh, I'm sorry. My name is Mike. I'm logged in under my fiance, Ali Keen, though. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a chef in town and um, just wanted to reiterate kind of what the last couple uh, people said. So I won't take up too much of your time. But last year, um, you know, what, what you guys were able to do in a, you know, short amount of time uh, really actually saved the us and you know we were able to get through um, during the winter everybody was kind of on the same same playing field but as we go back into summer like the other towns and the other villages around us are all doing a lot more outside and we as the weather turns and people are able to eat outside we, we just will be lo losing out to those towns and as a, a resident that lives around the corner from the avenue as well as someone that spends most of my working days on the avenue you know it's just you want to see that buzzing that nightlife that, um, you know, walk down the avenue and see people enjoying themselves and that kind of stuff. So thank you very much for listening. And we hope you consider all the comments that were said in the last couple of people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, else the hand up? No, right? No. Thank you for all your comments. We will consider them. Public hearing. Uh, and, and just, just let me say that, you know, I, I understand all the concerns of all the residents uh, and the business owners that addressed us tonight. Uh, we were in the middle of budget season and uh, we too were struggling and were struggling to keep the taxes on the residents uh, low and to provide the services. So th there are a lot of things pushing and pulling us here. So without any further ado on that, uh, I think I need to open up this public hearing, right? I need a motion to open up the public hearing uh, on the tentative budget. Oh. No, 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 hold on. I need to open up the public hearing on the cap, tax cap override. That's what we need to do here. Okay, so moved. I'll second. Uh, okay, call the roll. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Winthrop? Yes. Natchez? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Uh, I move, unless there's any comment or questions, concerns, I move that we uh, put the adjourn this until our first meeting in April, which is, somebody want to help me here? Eighth. Eighth. Twelfth. Somebody said eighth and twelfth, which is? It? It's I think the twelfth. It's the 12th. Uh, adjourn this to our next meeting, which is April 12th. 
I'll make that motion. I'll, I'll second. Uh, okay, call the roll. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Benchrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Hi. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Jerry, uh, could you give us the tentative budget report? Sure. Let me share my screen. I have a little presentation. Should we not open a public hearing first? Is this more of a presentation or a public hearing? Yes, it's a public hearing. I think Dan's right. Uh, I make a motion to open this public hearing on a budget. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Victor indicated aye too. Okay. Uh, Jerry? What would you like from me? I'd like you to do whatever you feel comfortable doing right now, Jerry. Okay, very good. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. So I have a, a quick summary of our budget um, for this year. Um, this is a little unusual for us and I'll explain why, because we are um, ahead of last year's schedule by 30 days. And so I'll explain to you a little bit about um, why it's a little unusual for us, but a lot of work has already been done. So we can focus more time on um, numbers and changes and other considerations. So we've completed budget work sessions already. Last year, we started on March 25th with our budget work sessions. This year, we started on February 23rd. And what I did, and, and uh, uh, appreciate the board's consideration, is we broke up our work sessions. So we didn't have um, three or four um, departments. At the same night, we basically uh, tried to give each department during a two hour budget session, at least an hour or whatever part of an hour they needed. And so on the 23rd, we started, we had one on the first, we had one on the third, we had one on March 10, we had one on March 15. And that pretty much runs all of our departments through um, the Board of Trustees um, review and consideration and we looked at each individual budget uh, in detail, asked questions, and then we had budget committee members ask questions as well. Tonight is our public hearing. Uh, Wednesday night, we will have a budget work session for um, revenue and expenses. We will have uh, on the 13th, our capital budget review, as well as our water fund and our sewer fund review. Um, mostly my focus is capital budget and sewer fund uh, water funds a little bit different the way it's structured. And then um, on the 26th, if I have the date right, we will have our, um, we will have our uh, budget adoption vote. Uh, and I hope uh, we have all this work done by that date. Um, some of the things that um, were made <clears throat> known to the board is that um, while we still have uh, an allowable growth um, under the cap of $778,707, uh, we have some serious increases in unallocated insurance, pension, FICA, workman's comp, and health insurance. And um, to the tune of 1.315 million. So in order for us to absorb that amount of money in our budget, what we needed to do was go back to our department heads and ask them to reduce they group two and group four items, uh, basically supplies and, and contract services as much as possible. My directive was 10%. Uh, se several of them were uh, uh, in the 10% range, 9%, 8%, a few were a little bit less. But I know because they're, they're um, very diligent as far as uh, um, managing their budget and managing their operation that they did the best they could. So while we had to deal with $1.3 million worth of increased costs that are pretty much out of our control. Um, we were able to come in still under the cap by absorbing that amount of money. Um, and uh, the reason we are just under the cap is because we reduced 
Our sales tax projection from our original uh, January 28th projection, we reduced our uh, parking uh, on street meters. We reduced that because we know we're not going to be able to get that income. Um, while the um, restaurants believe that they're having a, a tough time, we are definitely having a tough time. Um, we had to reduce our um, railroad parking for residents and for non-residents and a few other items. And so that anticipated reduction in revenue coupled up with the um, huge insurance and pension um, increases. Um, we're talking about 477,000 in insurance and 608,000 in pension. Um, we, we, uh, we had a struggle uh, to try to get to where we needed to be. This is the ugliest slide because it really has a, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, numbers that um, typically are just, you know, um, back office type of things. But the reality is um, with the proposed tax levy of um, on, on, on this year, and that should say 2021, 2022, um, we're just under the cap by $446. Our total expenditures are 39,507,234. Our revenue, um, uh, non-tax revenue is uh, 11,988,660. And then we have in the budget the use of surplus and that has been flat for many, many years. I do wanna add that the um, other communities and our sister community right next door, um, although they are a town and not a village, um, they had to increase their use of surplus by 18%. They went from 1.95 million last year to 2.3 million in surplus that they used in order to adjust their budget. Um, if we were permitted to use those kinds of numbers, uh, we would have a zero tax increase, but um, we're just using or proposing to use the $600,000 um, surplus that we've used uh, in years past. Total tax levy. Again, the numbers are different. Uh, they should be 2021, 2022. Um, um, so from last year, from 2021, 2022, uh, the increase is 778,708 as, as, uh, as, uh, as I said uh, originally. Um, this is our increase in the tax levy. You can see it steadily goes up, almost identical every single year. Um, this is our assessed evaluation. Obviously, um, we keep continuing to um, increase our assessment. Now, we don't have the final numbers as far as our assessment, but, but this is what we're working off of right now. And our tax rate. Um, so in 2019, 2020, we had a 6.1 tax rate, 2021, 20. 2020, 2021, we had a 6.12. And this year we're proposing a 6.14 tax rate. The increase is slight um, because of the drop in revenue and um, the expenses that are um, out of our control. And this is the best slide of all. So our fund balance continues to grow. Um, we uh, only, um, only five years ago, we were just over $10 million. Um, this year, this past year, we have a, a fund balance of $14,272,459. Um, even with the pandemic and even with the struggles that we're going through, uh, we're still tightening our belt and making it work for us. Uh, I do want to add, Mayor, one other thing. Last year, uh, before the pandemic, staff worked extremely hard on putting together a budget. And uh, our budget presentation was ready to go with a lot of initiatives and, and, and uh, doing great work, uh, maybe some work that was deferred in the past. Um, and then we got hit with the pandemic. And so we had to adjust our budget um, before, um, before the adoption. And what we did was we cut anticipated revenue by 1.8 million and we cut our expenses as much as possible. In fact, we cut $2.5 million out of that proposed budget. Um, I promised the board at that time, 
because there was a lot of uncertainty that I would revisit the budget and make recommendations on December 1st, which I did. Uh, we froze positions. We had to, uh, I had to uh, embargo some, uh, some lines so that we could um, control our costs. We took our purchase order um, requirement from $1,500 down to $500. So I would have more control over approving uh, some of the uh, items and services that the department heads were ordering. And um, we looked at and uh, initiated a volunteer um, furlough program for, um, for um, staff, uh, for which um, I appreciate staff. We saved over $15,000 on our volunteer furlough. So last year, we did the budget three times. Before the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic, and then on December 1st. And so right now, we're healthy and project that we'll probably finish this year with um, three, four, maybe even as much as $500 in surplus. And that's all due that, to controls, 500,000. 500,000. And so, Jerry, so let me, let me interrupt you for one second. We're looking at this graph that you have here uh, on the fund balance that we have now. Uh, when you compare that to the projected budget, it looks like about 35%. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanna, all right. Can we pass the resolution about keeping it at 30%, but it looks to me back of the envelope like 35%. That may be, I didn't do that calculation. I should actually. So our 30% is, um, is very, very responsible. And, and, and the public and, and the residents of the village should know that 30% number um, is very responsible. Uh, I know that other communities around us um, are at 15 to, to 20%, and that's great for them. If 30% works for our board, that's great for us. Uh, but the reality is um, we do have a significant amount of money in our fund balance mm -hmm. to help us offset taxes. And if we're you know, talking for the last 45 minutes about trying to help the restaurants, there may be some conversation about using some fund balance to be able to help all the residents of this village. Nice. I know some some of our residents do very well, and uh, you know God bless them for that. But some of our residents struggle, and some of our residents uh, are um, you know going to have a tough time with the tax increase. But my responsibility is to put forth to the board the most responsible budget that I could, maintaining services and continuing to do some of the things um, that we're required to do. We definitely wanna make our pension payments because if we don't, you know what's gonna happen. So that's where I am, Mayor. Thank you very much to the board. Can you favor, Jerry, just go back. What was the, what was the projected budget? I just want that number. Oh, 3957, okay. 3957234, yeah. Okay, 36%. Yeah, 36%. Our, our fund balance is now 36 percent. Okay, can we that's pretty healthy. The, can we put this on the website? Oh, sure. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, very, you're very welcome. Absolutely. Thank you, and thanks, Dan and Augie and Laura. You know, I just get the glory. But <laughs> <laughs> if you want to call it glory, um, so that's where we are. The budget, the tentative budget is posted on um, online or on my budget address, which has a, you know, if you, um, it just has the, the realistic. I didn't go into our pandemic. We've been dealing with the pandemic for an entire year. I'm tired of it. Um, I wanted to just move forward and take a look at some of the things that we've done. Um, in reality, even while we were working by protecting and working very hard to protect everyone during the pandemic as best we could, we still uh, were able to do um, some great work. We have a Black Lives Matter mural uh, in the village now. Um, this evening, the board is uh, considering for the final time the police reform and reinvention plan. Um, and as far as uh, when I first got here two years ago, my directive was to um, um, increased diversity, uh, we are uh, doing a lot better in that regard. Um, and uh, as we are joined by our uh, police chief, 
Sandra DeRuza. So I appreciate the fact that um, even while we're dealing with a global pandemic and the, and the, um, the numbers um, as far as positives that we've dealt with in this village, we still have been able to put forth some great initiatives. And, uh, and that, makes me, that makes me think like we can do a lot more once this is gone. Yeah, I, I just want to point out too that last year uh, when we were in the middle of the initial budget process and the gravity of the pandemic hit, uh, we reacted by drastically cutting uh, projections on revenue. And I, I just went, you know, but eventually that's coming back. Might not all come back this year. But eventually, that's going to come back, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the, the sales tax will come back, and the mortgage tax will come back. So, you know, I, I just want to point out to our residents that this is not uh, anything gloom and doom. It, it, it's more that uh, we're trying to be careful and judicious. We may have a parking lot for sale in the future if no one goes back to the city. But um, you're right, Mayor. You know, I, I've been in this, I've been living and working in the city for 60 years, and, and I've heard it's uh, pronounced dead many, many times. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always, it always comes back. It's New York. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Tippett would like to weigh in. Softballs. Only softballs, Glenn. Nothing tough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't plan any of the tough questions. That That's for a later time, a later date. But I do want to... Uh, congratulate the staff. Um, this is an extremely difficult process and the numbers aren't getting easier any year to any year. And if you look from, you know, our past budgets and the current budget, um, you, you have a, a, a brilliant clerk treasurer that stayed on top of all our bonding. Um, when he had the opportunity, he went out, he refunded. So our bond rate is as, as low as can be. I know everybody is doing their best to squeeze every, every single penny, every single dime. We have a lot of imagination uh, and ingenuity with uh, some of the uh, revenue, uh, thinking outside of the box. And, you know, I, I, I will question, I will, I will, you know, probe. But that doesn't mean that I don't totally appreciate. In fact, if I didn't think you were up to it, I wouldn't bother asking you the tough questions. Thank you. So take tonight, congratulations, pat yourselves on the back, and we'll get back into it in a couple of days. <laughs> take care. <laughs> Thank you. Brilliant. I agree with them. Uh, anybody else on the board have any questions or concerns? Now, I think anyone who's been watching the work sessions would see that the department heads really did do an extraordinary job. Um, okay. Thank you, uh, Jerry. Thank you, uh, Augie. Thank you, Dan Sonoff, uh, and all the staff uh, who helped prepare the budget. Uh, the next up, public comments on the Police uh, Reform and Reinvention Committee. It's on the website. Uh, this was uh, mandated by Governor Cuomo's executive order. Uh, Excuse me, Mayor. I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you, do you need to adjourn that public hearing or close it on the tentative I, budget? I think we need to close it. You need to adjourn it. I think we need to adjourn it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> thank you, Sally. I need a motion to adjourn that public hearing to uh, April 12th. So moved. Second. What you call? Trustees Lucas? Yes. Wentrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. And thank you, Sally. I'm a little off my game tonight. Okay. Uh, public comments on Police Reform and Reinvention Committee. Uh, as I was saying, uh, Governor Cuomo, uh, mandated that every community that has a police department uh, do this exercise. 
the village of Limerick worked hard with a volunteer committee in tandem with our police force and uh, our village manager, Jerry Barbario and Dan Sonoff. We have come up with a report. Uh, the report is very extensive and uh, shows the hard work that the committee put in. The board has gone over it, uh, made some minor adjustments and changes. And tonight is the last opportunity for the public to weigh in upon that. Okay, as of now, I don't see anybody with their hand up. Uh, is anybody on the board? Is there any comments? Okay. Uh, Chief, thank you for your hard work on this. Um, just, I think that like, just to reiterate, the committees did a very good job. Um, a lot of the initiatives that we talked about, we were planning on doing already. Um, I think sometimes change can be a good thing. So we are looking forward to moving forward with these recommendations as well as anything else that we, um, can come up with. Thank you, Chief. And thank you to the cooperation of uh, all the staff that helped out with this. Tom, uh, we did make a couple of changes uh, in the work session. Yes, and th that that'll be when we uh, when we get to the part of the meeting where we approve the plan. Right now, it's just public comment. Unless anybody on the board wants to talk about anything else. I, I just want to say thank you to all of the, the committee members who worked. I mean, I know they started around Thanksgiving and they worked really hard to get this done. There were many, many Zoom meetings. And um, I just, I, I, you know, I know many of them want to keep on participating in this. And, um, you know, I think we need to keep the committee going in some form because this is, this is just a start. And um, I just think it's a, it's a wonderful start. Okay. Uh, thank you to everybody who attended all the meetings. Thank you to everybody who filled out a survey. Uh, and hopefully uh, we will fund some of the initiatives in the future, uh, such as body cameras and uh, other uh, good ideas. But that being said, and there being no hands raised, uh, let's move on to the next order of business is the order of the bills. Okay. Okay, the first is a budget transfer. Uh, and what this is doing, uh, we are transferring money uh, from bond anticipation notes to serial bonds. Is that right, Ori? That's correct. Well, you could just explain what a bond anticipation note is for folks playing all at home. Absolutely. Um, prior to actually going out to bond, municipalities are out to issue short-term um, loans called bond anticipation notes. They're, sh they're in anticipation of a bond, in essence. What this allows you to do, it allows you to aggregate several smaller bonds into one larger bond. To issue a regular bond might cost you anywhere between sixty to 100000 a bond anticipation note is six, $6,000 total cost to issue. Uh, by doing so, you could save a significant amount of money over the long haul by accumulating a lot of smaller short-term notes into a larger one. And that's why we use bond anticipation notes. Thank you, Walter. Okay, so this will be uh, in the general fund, uh, an anticipation note of 245,000 and another anticipation note interest 65,521, uh, and those will become serial bonds uh, for a total of 311,499. And from the water fund, uh, there are three anticipation note, one of principal and two of interest and appropriated fund balance. And they will be going into two serial bonds, one of principal and one of interest. And that would be a total of $163,952. Then the sewer fund, uh, there is a appropriate fund balance of 2,876. Another anticipation note 
on principle of 34,000 and change, another one of 2,900 and, and 50, and another one of 24,432 for a grand total of 64,588. So I need a motion. Before we get to a motion, um... Uh, could, Augie, is it possible that you could just quickly run through what each of those major, what the major items were in each one of those, or so people understand what we're doing? What the money was used to purchase on each one of these, I can't recollect. Okay. Sure. Okay. I need a motion. So moved. We need a second. Second. Where well, Glenn has his hand up. Yeah, uh, Dan, to answer your question, if you go to uh, last year's audited report, it'll tell you what had um, anticipation uh, notes against uh, what, um, what expense. Uh, the one question I did have was, uh, did we, uh, the bond anticipation notes, I believe, were cashed in last March. Um, did we uh, make that part of the serial bonds that we purchased in 2020, or is the money part of the uh, bond um, issuance of 2021? Yeah. Yeah. Part of 2021. 2021. Thank you, Augie. I know, appreciate it. Uh, do we have a motion to say? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. hold the roll. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Weintraub? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, so resolution authorizing to budget transfer to fund change order for emergency repair on Village Own Diesel Line. Diesel spoke wrong. Uh, Jerry, this is the line uh, from the diesel tank uh, that ruptured, but was caught within another line, so there wasn't a spill, right? Correct. It's a double wall diesel line. Double wall diesel. So it uh, goes up the road, and um, transferring eighty four hundred dollars from contingent uh, to public works contract service. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? Jerry, this covers both lines, correct? Both lines, yes, that's correct. I need a motion. So moved. And and I'd like to thank the staff for catching it and fixing it without a big environmental disaster. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'll second. Augustino. Trustees, Lucas? Yes. Weintraub? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you. Okay, there's another budget transfer to fund open budget accounts. Uh, the first one is from part time personnel, uh, legal to recreation administrative, administrative part time personnel, $10,475. Uh, the next one is snow removal fuel to snow removal seasonal salaries, $1,007. Uh, the next one is community rec programs, 3,000 from the soccer equipment and 3,000 from soccer contract services. And this will be going into uh, the fall softball and uh, the lands of lights. And they will be that total 6,000. The, the total uh, transfers are $17,482. Do I have any questions or concerns? The motion. So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Weintraub? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Uh, the next one is order of abstract, uh, uh, approving abstract of order of vouchers. Uh, tonight's grand total is 1 million. $984,044.72. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? Yeah. 
Okay. Any motion? One minute. I, I have a small item. Uh, page seven. Actually, page six at the very bottom. There's a 512 AKRF bill. And I, I've been tracking this to see how our, you know, our planners uh, charge a review of certain uh, accounts for applicants. And I did see there that one $180, so it's small, but, but it's, 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 it's the mechanism that I'm tracking. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that 500 is for a review by this company for a, an application, the Chipotle application. I, I would like a staff to review whether that $180 should be borne by the village or should be passed through, passed on through the applicant, which I think is the code and the policy. So that's that's my only observation. I finally pinned it down. I had asked Jerry a little bit about this, and then we, we now now I pull pull these things together. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? No. All right. And your motion to approve the abstract. So moved. I, I always wait. I always wait thinking maybe someone will jump in. I'll second. Will we see a call? Trustee Yes. Yes. Maestro? Yep. Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Here you go, buddy, when you're ready. And just, just to make sure, so let me know tomorrow whether that bill was, sure. should have been here or there. It will. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, resolution, uh, old business, resolution, appointing chair of traffic commission. We're not ready for that, are we? Nope. Okay, we will hold that over. Uh, a bench donation uh, for Ms. Marino. Uh, Whereas Ms. Pat Nietzsche, Roe Angeletta, Donna Magnata, Linda Jackson, Cindy Cipriano, and a group of loving friends are desirous of donating a bench and plaque to the village of Americ to be placed in Harbor Island Park in loving memory of Barbara, Mar Barbara Marino. And uh, whereas, quote, now be it therefore resolved that the Board of Trustees accepts the donation of the bench and plaque in the village park, such a uh, park to be determined by Mr. Marino and the Acting General Foreman of Parks Department. Uh, this mayor will not be at Harbor Island Park. If it says that, it should not say that. Say it again. It will. It may be at. An, it may be at another park. It's not going to be at Harbor Island Park. Okay. At the it district. will be at another park. It just. Okay. It just says a village park. It's okay. Okay. Uh, oh, good. Ms. Marino uh, was taken way too soon. Uh, her and her husband uh, created a great family and uh, very nice children uh, who uh, grew up with some of my children and uh, she's very much missed and uh, 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 my condolences to the Marino family. Uh, so I need a motion to uh, accept this. So moved. Uh, so moved. Second. Uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, Boston Cross Road, meter parking. Jerry, you want to talk about this? Sure. What I'm looking for um, is the board's consideration to allow us to put metered parking on Boston Post Road from Orienta to the entrance to Harbor Island Park, both sides, uh, mostly because during the summertime, um, it is two hour parking and enforcement does the best that they can, but um, it's basically a way for people to circumvent the, um, the fees that we charge at the, uh, at the Harbor where they park on Boston Post Road and then um, utilize our parks, which of course we want people to utilize our parks. Um, but um, there is a, a, 
there is a um, an obligation for them to um, to be able to either pay or um, um, while they're utilizing our services or find another place. And so I think that um, a problem that was identified last year, uh, we should move forward on. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get everything in a row uh, or done or put everything in, in, a, <clears throat> in motion for, um, for June 1st, I'll try my best, but that's what I'm looking for. I drove by, I had occasion to drive by uh, Saturday it was, it, was, it was about 3.15, and there was not a parking spot open. You know, everybody was, you know, but just like you said, it was good. Everybody was out enjoying the park. We want that. Sure. You know, a lot of soccer and uh, different sports being practiced. Anybody have any questions or concerns? A small comment is to, to insert in the resolve uh -huh. Except, except in front of the uh, fire yeah. apartment memorial. Yep. Yep. So because it's not in there, and um, we'll make sure that it's it, safe. It, it's more. It's more as as a you know, courtesy or a message that we've heard the uh, the concern of them. So yeah. please insert except in front of the. Uh, uh, where, where do you uh, want it? I want it inserted just so we know. What do you think is the best plan? Whereas be resolved and the village manager is requested to prepare a couple of bikes prepare a plan and install extended a new parking area on Western Post Road between Mamaric Avenue and Delancey, comma, except, except in front of the fire department memorial. It's fine, okay. And that's because that's, there's that's, no parking in front of that memorial. Oh, correct. Yeah. So right. that's going to be like four spots and of yeah. course then put everything accordingly but that's so that it's just left clear not good enough no that okay jerry that works yeah that works for us yeah that's sure. right okay okay that being amended amended as uh victor just delineated uh can i have a motion i move it i'll second then Augustino, please. Trustees, Lucas. Yes. Winstrup. Yes. Natchez. Yes. The floor. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Hi. The, you know, it, it, it might be a little inconvenience, but we are trying to keep the tax, the tax rate down on the real estate. Okay. Uh, approving New York, New York State Public Employer health emergency planning document. We, we went over the document during uh, our work session. Uh, Jerry, thank you very much for preparing the same. Sure. Um, anybody have any questions or concerns? Mayor, we we're gonna make a um, uh, minor um, corrections as per trustee Natchez and then submit the plan before April 1st. Right, and, and, and as, as as we talked about it, as it, we amended it in the work session, it's fine. Correct. This is just the resolution that we have in front of us. Thanks. No questions or concerns? Mm -hmm. Can I have a motion? So moved. Well, what motion are we moving? To approve the resolution in front of us uh, to approve the plan. Well, I'm. Um... I'm concerned that I'd like to change the resolution a little bit, or at least suggest some changes. Uh, on the first, now therefore be resolved. At the end, right between approve and the uh, police reform, the concept of the, or the concepts within, excuse me. And after here two, uh, at the end of that, uh, with the understanding that the re recommendations need to be further explored and delineated by the Board of Trustees, Police Chief, and the Village Manager. Uh, you're on the wrong. You're on the wrong page. I'm sorry. This is the health plan. This is the health I apologize. Plan. All right. Hey, Kelly made the motion. I'll second. Augustino. Trustees, Lucas. Yes. Wentrup. Yes. Matthews. Yes. To four. 
Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, pandemic response plan for the village of Mamaroneck. Uh, we went over this at the work session. This is the resolution adopting the pandemic pandemic response plan. Uh, Jerry, you worked long and hard on this one too, and uh, this is something that you brought over from the municipality that you previously represented, isn't it? It is, yes. It was a tabletop exercise, a three-day tabletop exercise in 2015 when everyone made fun of me because we'll never have a pandemic. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm reading Obama's book and I'm reading the part where it was just dealing with the H1N1. Uh, oh, yeah. Epidemic yeah. In 09 and 010. 09, yeah. And uh, everybody thought, it would, you know, that's a once in a century occurrence. Right. <clears throat> Wrong. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody have any questions or concerns? No. I'll make a motion. Second. Uh, Mr. Fusco, would you please call the roll? Absolutely. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Wintrip? Yes. Natchez? Yes. DeFore? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Uh, okay, resolution approving PRRC plan. Questions or concerns? Does anybody want to? Yeah, Dan, go ahead. Hey, I'd like to suggest some changes. Uh, I'm in favor of the plan. I'm in favor of, but I, I'm concerned about the language. So where it gets to the, now, therefore, it be resolved. First, the first um, one. Yeah. End of that first line after the word approved and the word the concepts in and then at the end of that sentence uh or the next line where it says here to uh here to uh, with the understanding that the recommendations need to be further explored and delineated by the board of trustees police chief and village manager in order to be implemented so that's the first change i'd like to suggest Board. It ba it basically is consistent with what we've done in the work session that there some of this needs to be you know further flushed out, uh, and we're all in favor of moving forward with this. My concern with adding that language is that it it, it gives me the sense when I hear it that we're actually not adopting this plan. What are you adopting in the plan? If you're adopting every recommendation in the plan, then I could not support it because there's some of the stuff that needs to be further flushed out. But I think where and we it, and, 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 and can be done. So conceptually, I'm very much in favor of it. And I think a lot of it can be implemented quickly. And some of it is going to need to be, you know, worked out, you know, worked on, you know, harder but i think in those instances in our plan it it does say that you know this will be further worked on it actually does it you may believe that it could imply that but it doesn't say it so if you adopted technically you're adopting everything in it no i i disagree with that reading okay you can agree to disagree I, I don't think that this is necessary. And I also don't like, you know, changing amendments on the night of when, you know, you didn't even do it. Anybody else? M Mayor, in the resolution, the last, second to last line, it's executive order 203, not 23. We apologize for that. Actually, yeah, Victor. I, I, my main issue is well, let, let's there's three resolves, let's put it that way. And actually, there's some. Let, let me go in order, actually. The there's a whereas that re, de, describes when the Board of Trustees looked at this, 
And I believe it's, uh, we need to add one more, which is today's. It says March 8, mm -hmm. after March 8 and March 22nd work sessions because we made some, uh, some uh, amendments by consensus. So it's simply to add up there March 8, 2021 and March 22nd work sessions. So mm -hmm. that incorporates the, the amendments. Right. I think the, then the last whereas, I think we don't need the, you can strike a majority off and an agreement. So it only reads the after board, review yeah. of the recommendations, the board of trustees indicated their consensus with the recommendations of the police reform and reinvention committee. So it's small, but, but it's clarifies it. That makes sense. Then, then I, I but from what I heard from Trustee Natchez, I didn't have a problem with his first part, but I, the second one I didn't understand. I, I think that that goes, uh, that was not as clear, but, but I did understood the first piece, okay. My comment then is with the second resolve, that one is kind of a go ahead and implement the plan, whereas it's been clear uh, that it, the, the plan comes back to the board in, in different, in different uh, pieces, some for legislation, some are additional uh, appropriations, some are policies. So, so, that, so I think we actually don't need that second uh, resolve because the third one we definitely need essentially, which is the certification. The uh, executive order 203 asks us to uh, have an approved plan mm -hmm. and certified by resolution. So I think with two results, we, we will do our job. And, and the third one, the, the middle resolve is the one that may get you into, well, the plan says this, but your resolution says, go ahead and implement. I think the implementation has to be you know, looked at by the board, by additional advice, et cetera. But it comes back in pieces. Essentially, we endorse the plan, we approve it, and, 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 and we just uh, implement it as, as feasible. So those are my comments. So you want to take our resolve that the village manager and police chief are here and directed to begin implementation? You want to strike that, that whole line? Yeah, the whole line. Does the, does the uh, executive order say anything about when we have to begin? It, it, does, it, it doesn't say you have to immediately begin implementation. No, it says you have to submit a plan by April 1st. That's it. Because right, the only thing I'm concerned of is running afoul of the executive order. So if that's not running afoul of it, I'm fine with it. And you have to certify by law or by resolution. So I think we'll do that with the last result. Okay. I'm fine with removing it. Okay. Uh, Victor, just just so um, I agree with you on the on taking out the second uh, or the middle resolved, if you will. The language that I was putting in at the end of the first one was to clarify that. Careful. Yeah, so now you don't need to clarify it because it's not there. Right. I'm following Victor's changes here. And did, and Dan's changes. I, I think corporate. Victor's changes. Uh, Resolve Dan's. Is that correct? It's the way I read it. Okay. Well, okay, but Victor was fine with the the first part of what I had suggested. Remind me of that. What was it? After approve, the concepts to in. I'm sorry, Dan, can you can you remind me where are you and what are you adding? Now it says now be it therefore, I'm sorry, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees does hereby approve and when I put the concepts in, 
the and then continue with the rest of the sentence. So I, I don't think we can say that because we have to approve a plan. That's yeah. the requirement. That's all we have to do. We, we are, that's what we're doing. And we're, and we're certifying that. Yeah, that's so. our plan. It, 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 it's, it's almost like we're, you know, we're pursue, you know, approving this conceptually, but not really this. Yeah, I can read it off the executive order, but it's just approving the plan. I, I, I can only go as far as what Victor changed. I'm trying to, the language is so small. I just don't want to get in any more trouble. I want to, you know, I want to come back and bite it. No. All right. I, I make a motion to approve the, the resolution as amended by Trustee Tafour. It, I'm just, it, it, it actually says we have to adopt, but I think approve will be okay. Yeah, well, we're giving the resolution that adopts the plan. Right. Yeah, and and in the final resolved fixing the typo, order twenty three to order two hundred three. Yes. Two hundred three. Uh huh. I make a motion. And and I'll second that. Trust, uh, Mr. Fusco. Trustees, Lucas. Yes. Weintraub. Yes. Natchez. Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you for so, suggesting changes. And, uh, you know, now that we've done this, just should in the now, there, therefore, be it resolved, should we use the word adopt instead of approve because the executive order says adopt? I'm. I'm... Yeah. Such plan shall be offered public comment to all citizens in the locality and after consideration of such comments. They'll be presented to the local legislative body in such political subdivisions, which shall ratify or adopt such plan by local law or ordinance as appropriate no later than April 1st, 2021. They use the word adopt. Nor is right. All right. So do we want to go back and um, can we just amend the just to, just to retroactively amend it to, yeah, yeah, to approve yeah. to adopt? Yes, yeah, sure. yes, we can. Yeah, adopt is the way to go. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nora. Uh, thank you, Terry, for putting it in the packet. Re resolution authorizing donations of bicycles to Miller's Bike Shop. Uh, Chief DeRosa, while we have you here, can you explain this a little bit? Yes, so we had a uh, bunch of bicycles, found property mostly, um, most of them of little value that Miller's has indicated that they will accept and fix them and donate them um, to needy families. Sorry, donate them to where? I'm sorry. To needy families, people in need of bicycles. I think it's a great initiative. Thank you. I think it is Thank good. Uh, and Chief, uh, you can go home. Well, you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for this last one. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Except the resolution, excuse me, the resolution doesn't actually say that. It says we're donating, we're giving them to Millers, but it doesn't say that they're donated. The backup on the work session. Yeah, it, it, That's not what the resolution says. No, it says, it says, donate it. We'll then assess which bicycles will be salvageable to fix them to later be donated. Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed the last donated. Okay, great. I'll make the motion. I don't think this is a money maker for for, for Millers. I think no, this is I'll just... second the motion. No, I just. Okay. Yeah. No. I think it's nice. Trustees, Lucas. Yes. Wentrop. Yes. Natchez. Yes. The four. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, Actually, a, a year ago it was impossible to get a bike this time of year. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. So you have to wait months. So anyway, good idea. And so there's still going to be need. A lot of people are going to need bicycles and more popular. So thank you, Chief. Good night. Agree. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, Chief. Uh, resolution authorizing purchase of fire department equipment. Uh, Mr. Sano, if you like this one. Sure. Um, uh, for the community, uh, 
through the assistance of Assemblyman Otis, we were able to secure a grant uh, in uh, spring of last year to help defray some of the uh, purchases we had to uh, put off because of COVID uh, in the amount of $250,000 uh, through prior purchases of uh, police vehicles uh, and uh, uh, scott bottles for the fire department. We've spent a majority of that money. Uh, the final purchases that we're asking the board to authorize are for turnout gear and pagers. And uh, should the board adopt this resolution, we'll have been able to successfully spend about $249,750 out of that $250,000. So uh, we're uh, asking for the board's approval so we can uh, move this purchase forward. We don't leave any money on the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try not to. Yep. Uh, any questions or concerns? Just thank you, Dan. Uh, thank, thank you to uh, Chief Costa as well. And to, and to uh, Assemblyman Otis, who always yes. looks uh, Absolutely. Uh, okay, I need a motion. Um, second. All right. Mr. Fusco, please, if you will. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Ventrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, next item on the agenda is a resolution accepting Westchester Joint Waterworks Project A 1367 Wholesale Customer Meter Purchase Regular at Westchester Avenue. This is so Westchester Joint Waterworks can monitor the flow of water that we send to Suez, uh, which is a private water company. And it, it also will be used to make sure that there is a adequate pressure during a uh, high volume uh, times when uh, there could be a, uh, a fire. So you, you wanna keep 35 pounds of pressure in the system at all times. Uh, that being said, I this will cost the village 69,500. That's our share. It's a $250,000 project. Any questions or concerns? Thank you to Westchester General Waterworks for a very detailed uh, description of the project that they sent over for the work session. I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Please call roll. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Weintrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, Hillside Avenue Bridge, that's for the next time, right there? That's correct. Okay, we, got, we don't have the information in that tonight. Uh, communication to the board round two. Mayor, can you add a resolution? Oh yeah, I, I, I'm, all my all my helpers are. <laughs> 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 I, I need a motion to add something to the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. And what we are adding to the agenda is a resolution to schedule a work session on the 29th of March, next Monday. Uh, and what this will be, we are going to do an hour of a work session, and then we are going to go into executive session uh, to discuss uh, village attorney uh, position. Any questions or concerns? Uh no, I just, uh, do we think we'll have Hillside Avenue Bridge for then, or will that be the week after? Um, it will probably be for the week after. Um, yeah, it's a, we're talking about a $4.2 million okay. construction contract. I, so. Don't hurry. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Take your time. <laughs> Take a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor of vetting that work session. Aye. 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 Okay, uh, Mr. Tippett has his hand up. Go ahead, Glenn. Yeah, um, I was just looking at the um, tentative budget. Um, if uh, from like page 129, where you have the criteria scale for Village of Memorandum Capital projects, could those pages be redone? Number one, they're very small. And number two, you ran out of ink on a couple of them. So they're illegible. 
but the, the uh, ba basically I am taking an eye test trying to read those. The rest of it's fine. It's just the capital projects part. Um, when when it when it was scanned in, it's just way too small. And like I said, some of it it ran out ink on some of the pages, so they they have to be redone. On the outdoor dining, I had spoken uh, before. The price was way too high. I think you should get together with the chambers, a, a chamber of commerce, maybe a couple of restaurant owners, and um, see if you can work out something that is equitable and affordable for those workers. Um, uh, did uh, did you? Um, what was it? The legal issues. If at some point in time we can get a list of what um, what legal issues we still have outstanding in the village, that that site doesn't seem to be updated. You know how many how many lawsuits are out there total in the in the village? Uh, with that, like I said, I think you guys did a really nice job with the uh, budget. Um, you guys are having a long session, so with that, Adu, the only thing I ask, if you can, please officially name me the Food and Quality Beverage Control Officer here in the Village of Mermerdick. I'd much appreciate it. Bye. Line. Okay, nobody else has a hand up. Okay, to the Village Manager. Mayor, I have one. Um, item to file for the record, and that's the lease at 650 Halstead, which we um, to renegotiate it a little bit. That's it. Thank you. Treasurer, nothing? Nothing at this time, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Village Attorney? Nothing for me, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, minutes of Board of Trustees work session, regular session, meeting of March 8th, and special work sessions of March Third and March 10th. And Sally, I just want to tell you, I, I appreciate how rapidly you get us these minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. And, and you know, they, they come right at the next meeting. And I know that's hard to do, and I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, minutes of the Harbor Coastal Zone Management Commission meeting of June 17th and July 15th. Uh, before we adjourn, I would just like to point out that Governor Cuomo announced today that people can get vaccinated uh, if they're 50 years old or older. So that opens up a lot of people uh, to potentially get vaccinated. So please uh, make arrangements to get the vaccine as soon as you can. Uh, you know, uh, some of us are lucky to have had it already. Uh, and the, the, the more uh, people in the community can get vaccinated and the nation can get vaccinated, the quicker we could all get back to the semblance of normality. Uh, and uh, the quicker we'll all be healthy and you know, the dying will stop. And that's really important. There's been a lot of dead. And nobody needs any more of that. So that being said, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. Okay, ignore it a second. All in favor? Aye. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.